particular video to single parents. And you know, a lot of people think when they think single parent, they think single mothers, but there are a lot of, and I am very, um, I am very proud. Some of my kids' classmates are single fathers, um, a lot of them, and, um, but they're not single parents. They co-parents, let me see like this, co-parenting skills, but a lot of them actually are raising the kids and some of them have girls and, and they're doing a darn good job. So when I say single parents, I'm not just talking about single moms because there are a lot of single dads out there and hats off to all of us that are doing it because it's not easy. You know, 100% of the time you got to put somebody else ahead of you when you have children. You know, and if you're in a relationship where uh, it's two of you raising the kids, then maybe your 100 becomes 75 because the other 25, uh, they do. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's going to be a give and a take. Um, usually, in any situation, there's going to be somebody that takes the lead. Honestly, that's just how life is. If there's a leader in the group and the leader leads, automatically somebody's going to step up and take that role. That role. But anyway, some things I've learned as a single parent, and I would be, you know, one thing I know is you have to put your kids first. You can't be so selfish or narcissistic to think that everything is about you. Um, and I learned that at an early age. Remember I told you I had my first child in high school. So, um, my daughter was four months old when I went to work. It was just a six-week job, but that change the trajectory of my life you know I knew I wanted to work in the public and I knew that I would be servicing people and that's what I've done the entire my entire life um and then my senior year I had a cooperative office education job so I worked one thing I want to tell you is don't sit around waiting on handouts try to be self-sufficient you understand what I'm saying? It's no better feeling than knowing that everything that your children have, you've provided it. Now, people want to, I'm not saying that you can't accept gifts. I just, I, I'm just a proud person. I don't believe in asking. Man, it's, it's self-satisfaction for me to know that, hey, I can sit back and look at, you know what? The Lord, I, me and God, we did this. You know, um, I just think before asking people, ask God. You understand what I'm saying? Um, another thing is be careful or be mindful who your children go around. I had one of my daughters, well, my daughters, um, they're four years apart, but they had a friend who was in the, um, who they grew up with, and um, he gave his testimony to my kids. Their, their family had a, um, one of the uncles or aunts had a birthday party and while the adults were in the front one of the men took him in the restroom and um, molested him you know so I think that and, 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 and anybody would tell you this that know me when I I would be invited to parties and stuff and I would probably be the last one getting there because before I would leave I would take my kids to my mom my sister somewhere like that and it wasn't very often but I would have them fed and bathed and everything before I went anywhere but I didn't bring them with me to the party because I just think that if you go into a place where it's going to be adults drinking and you know they're going to be cursing that's not really an environment for children now if it's a wedding reception or something like that that atmosphere is a little different but house parties and stuff like that where you know it's going to be drinking and stuff if I would I can't tell nobody look I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just trying to tell you what worked for me. Another thing is, I didn't allow my children to spend the night uh, too much away from home. If they did, usually my house was the house where all the kids piled up on the floor with blankets and slept. <laughs> yeah, but even if so, you know, when you're letting your kids go off and be up under somebody else's rules, because if your children are at somebody else's house, then yes, that that person should be able to discipline your children. So that's why it's important for you to know, you know, the morals and the standards that that person have in their household because your child and their and their under their um, 
guidance, you know, is, is you know, has to adhere to their rules. So that, I think that's very important. Another thing is make your kids go to school. If they get up, oh, I have a headache. Well, you know what? You go to school. If you still have that headache at noon, you call me. Because what I'll probably do is bring you an aspirin because I, you know, I just didn't allow my kids to miss no days of school. If they stayed home from school, they were sick. Uh, they had to go to a literary rally or it had some kind of school related activity that they went to. I mean, it was chaperone sometimes, you know. But, you know, make it be a habit that they go to school and don't just be checking them out for unnecessary things. And like a lot of times, even doctor's appointments and stuff, I try to make my kids doctor's and dentist appointments and things, you know, either late afternoon when school is out or either during their, their breaks and stuff. I, I just, I just thought, I always have thought, you give your kids Jesus and education and social skills. And one thing about social skills though, you have to be careful about that. You want to make sure that your children are self-confident and don't that my son although he's autistic he is not persuaded or he ha he has not you know let peer pressure um you know got it and for that i am thankful